Chapter 31 Imogen didn't want to lay it all out on the phone, so Harper had grabbed a few necessities, her words, before they left the store. If wine, pie, and whipped cream were necessities, then who was Imogen to argue? Harper flipped the clothes sign on the front door, and they all hopped into the charger. When Imogen asked if that would be a problem for customers, Harper just shrugged and said that the locals were used to odd hours. Whatever that meant. Next stop was Joe's. She needed to be on board to make the next part work. In fact, it was imperative. Joe was feeding the llamas when they pulled into the driveway. If she was surprised to see the muscle car or her niece again, she didn't show it. But when the doors opened and Bailey and Harper rolled out, a smile lit up her face. Girls, what's going on? Is everything okay? She closed the paddock gate and walked toward the house to meet them. Harper bounced up to Joe and gave her a kiss on the cheek, then took her bag straight into the kitchen. Bailey was more reticent and stopped to chat. Joe, how's it going? I heard the leg didn't even slow you down. Bailey grinned. Oh, why would a little old thing like a brick slow me at all? What, am I old? Joe's eyes sparkled with mischief. I happen to have a great assistant to help me out, at least for a time. But the wily old woman wasn't about to be distracted for long. She turned her attention to Imogen, who was uncharacteristically quiet and still, a pretty contrast to the bouncing dog next to her trying to lick Joe. The older woman shooed her away gently. Bailey smiled and followed Harper into the house to let them have a few moments to speak. So... Imogen put her hands in her pockets. How far did you make it? Her aunt asked, a little tongue-in-cheek. She took off her work gloves and put them in her back pocket, cocking a hip. Farther than you probably thought I'd get, Aunt Jo. She smiled sheepishly. How far is that exactly? She pressed. That border of Vermont and New York? Ha! Jo slapped her hand on her leg, then winced when she realized it was the healing one, and rubbed it instead to dull the sting. I told Gabe that you wouldn't even make it out of Vermont, but he insisted you were going all the way home. That was the idea. She let the sentence hang for a few seconds before she couldn't take it any longer. When did you talk to Gabe? Oh, he checked in on me this morning to make sure I was okay after you left. Imogen was frustrated. Clearly, Joe was going to make her work for the information. And you talked about me? Well, you might have come up. I swear that boy is as close-lipped as you. I couldn't get anything out of him either. She was disappointed. She wasn't coming back for him, but he certainly was a component in why she wanted to stay. Knowing she would stay, would it change things between them? Would he decide she wasn't some shiny, temporary flirtation? Her first step was to speak candidly and privately to her aunt. Everything else hinged on her response. After that, well, she had one very important stop to make. Aunt Jo, let's sit down and have a cup of tea. I need to ask you something. If Jo was surprised, she didn't show it apart from raising one eyebrow. She followed her niece up the porch and into the kitchen in silence, her slight limp more obvious with the cold snap heading their way. She sat down gingerly, rubbing her leg absently and prepared to listen to her niece. Imogen was on a mission. Her years of working odd jobs at a variety of different businesses in different roles had given her experience she didn't realize would come in handy. Once she decided what she had to do, she became hyper-focused on achieving her goal. For the first time in her life, she was able to delegate tasks to her friends and not be the one who was fulfilling others' requests. This was her life and she was determined to take the reins and make things happen. She just had to jump and do something very, very scary first. Take a blind leap of faith. The little farm was a far cry from the lush expanse of Laura's equestrian facility. As Imogen pulled the charger into the short driveway, she looked at the house covered in paint chips, the roof starting to sag in places. It looked unkempt and slightly sad. In direct contrast, the paddocks were meticulous. As she watched, a woman in an all-terrain vehicle whipped around, stopping to shovel manure into the back bin. The fencing was clean and strong, and the run-in sheds were lushly bedded with shavings. 
The Green Meadow Equine Rescue clearly put their money into the animals they rehabilitated and adopted out, rather than their own comfort. Imogen loved that. While she hated the fact Fortune had ended up in a rescue, she was glad this was one of such great quality. She pulled up near the tractor and got out. Cookie stayed at home, despite her protests on being left behind. She'd get over it. This was too important for Imogen to be distracted. She looked around, taking in the surroundings. The horses seemed quite calm and content, munching peacefully on hay nets or basking in the sun on the ground. It always made her laugh how people assumed horses couldn't lay down. She walked past two paddocks, but didn't see the big bay gelding anywhere. There was a large variety of horses here. Some looked like draft horses, and others looked small, probably Morgans, which were quite popular in the state. Imogen stopped to say hi to a few that had wandered over to the fence line in search of treats. She had none to give, but she scratched a few forelocks instead, their winter hair coming in and making them fuzzy and soft. She giggled as one particularly large horse with one eye started to nibble on her hair. <laughs> Enough of that, mister. Keep your teeth to yourself. He let out a soft breath. Gosh, he was adorable. Imogen waved hello as the woman in the ATV spotted her and motored over, the horses unfazed by the vehicle. She got off and walked through the horses to the fence, gently patting them on their hindquarters to let them know she was there. Can I help you? She was older than Imogen, around fifty, she guessed. Her laugh lines were prominent, as were the frown lines on her forehead. She wore a pair of overalls tucked into muck boots and covered in an open flannel jacket. There were remnants of hay all in her messy bun and clothing. Imogen could relate to that. It always ended up inside her clothing somehow. Hi, I'm Imogen. I need to talk to you about a horse. I'm Nadine. Let me come out and we can talk in my office. Imogen moved over to allow the other woman to exit and followed her to the building she saw when she first drove in. Neither one spoke, but it was an easy silence. After sitting down at the desk, Nadine waved Imogen to sit in the chair on the opposite side. She pulled out a stack of papers. Here is an application for adoption. We are very careful who we adopt our animals to. They are here because they were mistreated, and it's very important to me that it doesn't happen again. Imogen was impressed. I can appreciate that. It has to be hard seeing these animals come from hoarding or abuse cases, spend all the time to rehabilitate them, and let them go just trusting that their lives will be better than before. Nadine pointed a finger at her. Exactly. Now, before we get to the specifics, I will also say I do a home visit to make sure the care is appropriate before signing off on anything. Then, I will make a 30-day follow-up. If everything looks good and we're all happy, then I wave goodbye and wish you well. Otherwise, I'll take back the horse and put out the word you aren't to be trusted. Harsh, but again, Imogen had to imagine this woman had seen the worst of humanity. So, she simply nodded and said, Whatever you think is best. This is my first time working with an equine rescue. I'm glad you're here. We have so many horses in need. Many of these animals have trust issues, behavioral problems, and some physical handicaps, so I can only adopt to people who are familiar with horses and are willing to seek professional training and veterinary care. Absolutely. I took some time off horses, but I've just come back to it and have been working with them regularly. My neighbor is Dr. Davis, and I'll be working with Bailey Winters as a caregiver and wrangler with Green Mountain Glamping. Saying it aloud made it official and gave Imogen excited butterflies all over again. Before leaving Joe's, she'd pulled Bailey aside and asked her if her offer was still on the table. It was, to her happiness. Harper overheard and came running. Before she knew it, she and Harper were jumping up and down, squealing like middle schoolers while Bailey rolled her eyes. But she knew her friend well enough to detect the smirk. She was a tough one, that woman. Oh, that's wonderful, Nadine responded, breaking Imogen out of her reverie. Dr. Davis is incredible with the animals, and Bailey has adopted several horses to retrain and then give them a second chance with her trail rides. You couldn't be in better company. I couldn't agree more, Imogen said. She began to complete the application. It was quite extensive. A background check. Wow. Still, fortune was worth the invasion of her privacy. It wasn't like she had any felonies in her back pocket or anything. While she completed the document, Nadine continued to fill her in on the adoption process, the care of the animals, and a request for a monthly donation to support the equine rescue. 
It had to be hard running an operation so large. She couldn't help her curiosity. Do you run this place by yourself? Nadine snorted. I run the everyday matters here, but have a board of directors that help me with the business side of things. And I have some volunteers who come and spend time with the horses and help with chores. It definitely keeps me busy. It must be hard to get close to these animals and then adopt them out to strangers. It can be. This is not an easy life. I see the worst of humanity. There's always something that needs to be fixed on the property. We go through hay like air, and medical bills add up. Is it worth it? Imogen asked. Nadine smiled sadly. I wish I wasn't needed. But until then, I can't imagine not being an advocate for these animals. I've dedicated my life to them. You're amazing. The words slipped out, but Imogen didn't regret it. You're a doll. Nadine took a deep breath and slapped her hands on the desk, making Imogen jerk with a sudden sound. Okay, if you're done, let me review your application and we can go from there. She looked over the paperwork and then paused suddenly. I think we have a slight issue, Imogen. Her heart pounded and she began sweating. Was something wrong with her application? It never occurred to her that it wouldn't be accepted. She had great work experience, a safe place to keep him, and incredible referrals. What's wrong? Well, under Horse's name, you wrote Bold Fortune. Yes, exactly. Is that a problem? I know him and his former owner. It shouldn't be a problem at all. No, you don't understand. She was so confused. Clearly there was something she was missing. What is it? What's wrong? Had he been adopted already? He only arrived yesterday. She knew he was beautiful, but some of the horses in the paddocks looked like they had been there a while, a few weeks at least. He's not here. Imogen felt like she might faint. Her heart began pounding, and she felt she was about to have a full-on panic attack. I don't understand. I was told that his owner surrendered him last night. It was a mistake, and I need him. Nadine felt sorry for the woman, who was clearly distressed. I'm so sorry. I've never had a horse by that name in the rescue. I don't know where he is. He was missing. If she wasn't on the verge of a breakdown, Imogen would have laughed. It was completely on brand for that damn horse. It was all she could do to not get up and run at the door. Everything in her told her to bolt, but she couldn't leave yet. My mistake, apparently. If you hear anything about him through your network, please let me know. She showed Nadine a picture of them together on the trail that Gabe had taken during their trip. It seemed like a lifetime ago now. This is what he looks like. You have my number. Please, call me if you hear anything. Of course. Are you sure you don't want to meet the other horses? Unfortunately, I'm here for fortune today. But I'll be in touch with you, Nadine. Thank you for everything you do. With her parting words, she stood up, balancing herself on the desk so her legs wouldn't give out and made it to her car. Before the door had shut, tears were streaming down her face for the second time that day.